right, let's begin. You're going to learn a lot about the Bible now. Chapter 2, verse 21. When he was eight days old, he was circumcised. Hey, look at this. God getting circumcised. God getting circumcised. <laughs> you see the mockery, right? This was in the 80s. And he's playing to the Muslim crowd. God getting circumcised. Okay, watch. Named Jesus by the angel when he was in his mother's womb. Who was in his mother's womb? Jesus. Jesus. How did he come out from there? Like you and me. You who God. I'm asking if you were a nurse. You can imagine any situation. If you were a nurse 2,000 years ago in the stable, helping Mary when she's delivering the child, can you for one moment think that that helpless little creature with all the filth and the muck, See? your God, you're, your Jehovah, you're Allah. Your Allah. No, not Allah. See, he's playing to the audience. I'm going to decimate him here, and you're going to learn a lot. Oh. I'm going to show you something from Scripture, and I believe God brought judgment on him. Watch. I'm going to show you something. What the Bible says, okay? Well, let me show you something. All right, watch here. You're going to see what God did to this man. For our God is a consuming fire, okay? When his wrath burns, no one can stop him. Hebrews 10, 30, 31. For we know him who said, vengeance is mine, I will repay. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Okay, keep that in mind. Now watch here, Galatians 6, 7 to 8. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, this he will also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Let me show you what happened to Ahmadidat. In 1996, 1996, Ahmadidat got struck down with, I believe it was, a stroke. He became bedridden from 1996 to 2005. He became a vegetable. He could not speak. He could not move his hands. He could not move his feet he could only wink with his eyes and they would have to spell out words and he'd wink from 1996 2005 let me show you what the lord did here he is this is ahmadidat see that that's him you see god is not mocked do you see 1996 to 2005 this is the power of the living Christ, the Lord Jesus. For nearly 10 years, God allowed him to suffer as a vegetable in the bed, could not speak, could not move, sat there. This is his fate. You see it? I'm going to let you in on a little secret. You're going to go to answeringislam.info. Answeringislam.info, I'm going to give you the link. Ahmed Didat here. Watch what happened here. Did you know? Right before he got struck down, we have it documented. This is a fact. A group of Christian preachers in South Africa sent him letters in the local newspapers warning him, Didat, you've crossed the line. You're mocking God. God will punish you. And we have it documented. Go here. Right. Background information, Didat, stroke, paralysis, and death. Notice we have it documented. Member. He got struck down in 1995. Personal letter to Didat, November 1993. Open letter to Didat, being warned, being warned by Christian missionaries. You've crossed the line. You're blaspheming the spirit. God will punish you. As confirmation, this was God's judgment. It's right here. See, personal letter, open letter. Yeah, we have it documented. They can't say we're lying. You understand how real our God is? Our God is living. He's almighty. Jesus is living. He's almighty. All right, here, go read it. November 1993, to, before his stroke, he's being warned by Christian ministers. You're blaspheming the Lord. God will come in judgment against you. It's 1996 to 2005. Here it is. Open letter to Ahmad Didat. You have been for many years promoting your beliefs primarily by attacking other faiths. No, oh, you shouldn't say it's God's judgment. You don't know. Yeah, no, I do. You know, I know. 
because ministers warned him here you have ridiculed the fact that the bible contains instructions to eat shit and drink piss quoting his works and they're they're warning him god made it clear by having his servants warn him in letter to have it documented right here and look at all the pastors that signed it look pastor sam here let me show let me enlarge it for the reasons stated about pray for the humbly we now rebuke you in the name of the lord jesus christ we rebuke you they're praying the lord's judgment on him here it is folks don't give me that garbage our god is real he's almighty and he's a patient god but he will rise against you look at all the pastors this rebuke is motivated not out of any sense of animosity but from our fear of god and our christian love for you since your attacks against the bible been made public it pains us that this rebuke also has to be made public. But you got these up until you know you can't say that. What do you mean I shouldn't? Here, the letter, what date? Open letter, August 1994, right? August 13, in Durban, South Africa's main newspaper, Daily News, page six. They took an ad. They made it public as a witness. God is going to punish him because our God is real. Why do you think God did it? He had them publish it in newspapers for the public view so that there would be no doubt watching them do to him. So you know that I, the Lord Jesus, lives and Muhammad is dead under my feet. You see, another miraculous sign that our Lord Jesus lives. He silenced the most popular Muslim debater and shoved it down Muslim throats. Right? Jesus loves you. You shouldn't be like that, Sam. I don't see Jesus in you. Well, what happened to Bill Qureshi? And what happened to Bill Christian? Christians die. That's not the same context because here he was warned publicly and he was given a letter and this public rebuke was posted in the Durban's newspaper in his hometown so he can read it on page six. And then what happened? 1996. Bam! The Lord silenced him. Were you blown away? From 1996 to 2005. Oh, and by the way, Lepanto, that you're a warrior, dude. You and Zach and all you guys. Did you also want to hear something? Do you want to hear something? I'm going to shock you. In this debate, can I go a little deep? You guys don't mind, right? In this debate, there was a man named Ahmed Thompson. He invoked the Mubahila. Allah cursed the liars. Mubahila, this shows you how wicked Muhammad is. Let me go through it. Muhammad challenge christians from the john to invoke the curse of allah on who's lying here's the verse mubahila here muhammad told the christians the following chapter 3 verse 6 1 then whoever disputes disputes with you concerning him jesus it's all about danger after knowledge that has come to you i.e asa being a slave of allah and having no share in divinity say now look this is muhammad's god who's satan tells Muhammad to say come let us call our sons and your sons, our women and your women, ourselves and yourselves. Then we pray and invoke sincerely the curse of Allah upon those who lie. And then Allah will curse and damn the liars. Now watch here. According to Muslim tradition, Muhammad brought Ali, Fatima, Hassan, and Hussein and invoked Allah's curse. The Christians refused and left. You guys want to see God's sense of humor? You guys listening, please. If you listen, you're going to be blown away what God did. That curse that Muhammad invoked, it was him, Ali, his cousin, son-in-law, was married to his daughter, Fatima, and their two sons, Hassan and Hussein. You know what happened according to the Muslim sources, both Sunni and Shia? Muhammad was poisoned by a Jewish woman, and he died from the effects of the Jewish woman, and he died in severe pain and in misery. He even said, I feel like my aorta is being cut off. He died a cursed death. Fatima died six months later. Fatima was pregnant. Umar came to the house, smashed the door open, injured Fatima. She lost the child and burned her house down. She died later on. But wait. Ali ibn Abu Talib got murdered. And died. Hussein, his grandson, 
murdered at Karbala. Hassan, the other grandson, got poisoned by his wife, killed. Every one of them died brutal, shameful deaths. Because why? What did Jesus do? Oh, really? Jesus is almighty, not Allah. He goes, so you want to curse my servants? Well, now I'm going to take that curse and I'm going to now strike you dead and humiliate you and the curse will now fall on your head. All right, now, how does this tie in with Ahmad Didat? In the debate, Ahmed Thompson invoked the curse of Allah. Well, guess what happened? You saw what happened in Ahmad Didat, right? Guess what also happened to his son Yusuf? This is all. You can actually go to Google. Yusuf Didat, the son of Ahmed Didat. He got shot in the head outside the courthouse. He got shot and gunned down and was murdered. His son, shot in the head, killed and died and was murdered. Here, Google. Yusuf Didat murdered. Murdered. Islamic scholar Yusuf Didat was shot dead nine months ago outside the Verulam family court. The family of controversial Durban Islamic scholar Yusuf Didat, who was gunned down outside the Verulam court in January, are still waiting for his killer to be brought to book. Al Jazeera. Son of noted Muslim preacher shot in South Africa. See it? Honestly, tell me your reaction because I don't I don't know what. Are you like blown away? South African active activist and son of deceased prominent Muslim preacher is fighting for his life in a hospital after he was shot outside a court in the coastal city of Durban on Wednesday. He died. Police Colonel Thambika Mili said 65-year-old Yusuf Didat, son of Sheikh Ahmed, was shot in the head. As he walked towards the Verulam family court on the outskirts of Durham with his wife, he died. Are you honestly, guys, you are you blown away in awe how glorious and majestic our Lord Jesus is? And yet the Muslims can't see it and they think they're going to get away with shedding Christian blood or bullying Christians or blaspheming our Lord? It's fearful, right? But it's glorious because Jesus our Lord lives.